Hi everyone, I'm going to show you today how I make my stencils. There were a lot of questions lately because I'm using more of the ones I made. So I decided the, to do a new video about all the ways to make stencils. I already done in the past two. I will put a, a link below for the two of them because there are all kinds of more information in them. But I will go over from the simplest uh, stencil to the more uh, elaborate ones. So to start. The, the most uh, simple uh, way to make stencils is to take a magazine page and do some cutouts. This is my first stencil ever. I didn't have stencils. That's the only way I figured out how to make some kind of stencil. I just uh, folded the paper and it's just glossy, so it's a little bit more durable from a simple... A printer paper that's why I took it and I could also um, as you can see I could also fold it and cut shapes out of it now don't scoff it's a nice stencil I still use it and just so to show you how I've used it here is one simple here a 12 by 12 that was quite boring and I just stencil on, on it the shape again and again now for this, um, you just need to find a, a, a good glossy uh, magazine page. And if you are not uh, really sure about the cutout, there are designs, uh, free designs you can pick up in Pinterest, uh, all over the internet. Mostly uh, uh, under <laughs> all kinds of making like uh, snowflakes paper snowflakes for Christmas but this is quite simple I can demonstrate quickly I right now I just have printer paper here and you just fold it and you can start with easy fold uh, like this and then you can go for something more and just take some A pencil and design something that you like and it's at the beginning you're just doing simple like here it's simple uh, shapes the more you're uh, trying to do this kind of thing I think you get more <laughs> creative so I can show you another one that I've done also from a magazine a magazine page still have it survived the paint here it is so it's a really nice and a nice and easy way to go about it so I can do something like that now I use nail scissors with a curve not something for you <laughs> the, the straight ones they are thinner they are more uh, flex, flexible on the, on the paper or whatever you use, not only paper. I will show you the other uh, options. And it's just easier to maneuver them and to use the curve of uh, the scissors to make all these shapes. If I've made only a straight... If I wanted to do just straight uh, shapes, then I wouldn't need this kind of scissors. But then again, I would use eyebrows uh, scissors because they are still thin like this, but they are straight here. Any other kind of scissors are just a, a study in frustration to try and take up shapes, even if it's just from paper so i'm not using them this is the best option uh, to my knowledge from my experience on of making stencils i'm just cutting out now for <laughs> without even planning just so you can see how easy it is and this is just the beginning 
here we go stencil okay so that was option number one magazine pages and if you are not sure that they will <laughs> withstand uh, this kind of thing I suggest a nice coat a very thin coat but nice coat of gesso from both sides of the magazine page let it dry completely and then do this cutting out so next option is doing some uh, glue gun stencils now here are the stencils they are mostly uh, for using sprays I will not use this kind of uh, stencils with the makeup sponge and acrylic paint because they are raised and it's difficult to get anything uh, inside let me show you something here is another I will show you how to do this also let's remove the cutting board I don't want to spray it and I just have this let's take some sprays my sprays are made from gel food coloring and water here we go and I can also go on top and just let the whatever I have on top of the glue gun stencil soak into this page like so and of course removing this I'm gonna put it aside here just not to make a mess so this is glow gun stencils and I'm gonna show you how to make them and how even to flatten them a little bit so moving this aside for glue gun stencils you need to work on cookie sheet this is like this is a cookie sheet uh, the ones that you put that so it won't stick to uh, the pen whatever so cookie sheet you make your design now with this you need to take space so you will have enough room between shapes otherwise it won't do you any good so I can do some design and then I'm going over with the glue gun now not all glue guns were created equal <laughs> and some of them drip and do too much uh, glue it's not a solution for everyone it's quite frustrating because you can't be super fussy with it and there are strings of the glue gun and all kinds of stuff but sometimes it's really nice to play with it as you can see I do have some stencils from this hot glue now of course you need this to uh, to uh, completely cool down as long as it's hot it's still a movable shapeable whatever <laughs> and you of course you don't want to get uh, burned with it here we go okay so this needs to be completely dry and when dry and cool and when it's cool it turns out a 
this milky white now uh, only then you can peel it from the cookie sheet a, a way to flatten it if you are interested in flattening it is to put another paper on top and put some towel underneath and go with an iron and I'm not taking out mine it's heavy I you never ever use it and just um, decided that it's not worth it but if you're really interested in making this kind of stencils and still want them flat and not with all these ridges and texture you just need to flatten it with an iron now the iron will spread it more it will be flat but it will spread more so you need to figure out to make more space between the shapes because it will spread so I'm going to take this uh, aside and when it will uh, cool down I will peel it just so you will see next <laughs> next options is plastic dividers now this is once again not all plastic dividers are created equal there are thin ones, there are thick ones, there are all kinds of plastic out there. If you want to use this, it needs to be flexible so you can uh, cut it. Uh, there are some, if, let's see if I have an example from something that someone sent me. This is a different kind of plastic divider. I would be, it would be really hard for me to cut anything from it. This is from one of those uh, fancy machines and I got it in Happy Mail but if I wanted to cut it by hand it would be quite uh, difficult although it's almost like using acetate and that will be the next uh, thing so we have plastic dividers and I'm gonna show you some of my uh, some of the stencil I've made with uh, plastic dividers like this one and my the last one I've made where is it well first of all here is another option this is was quite uh, easy to do this is just uh, using a punch in this shape this is just using um, where the eyelet the thing that you use for eyelids just this one I've made this and this was cut by hand with this kind of scissors very easily and again this is quite free uh, shapes nothing uh, symmetrical and I just cut it uh, either with this or with a um, <laughs> scalpel knife or uh, exacto knife whatever you call it and for if you want to cut things that are straight uh, you can use utility knife or box knife box cutter whatever you call it again <laughs> so these are from uh, the plastic dividers this is the last one I've made again quite easy and first of all when I do something like this it, it looks uh, elaborate but it's not first of all I will uh, design it on a paper and the thing to watch for when you are uh, designing a stencil is that you need to break down the shapes like I couldn't do a complete circle it will just drop out of the plastic you need to all closed shapes like something like that needs to be divided and it takes time until I still make mistakes <laughs> when I'm doing something like that <coughs> sorry and if I want like here I have a leaf but I want it a little bit more uh, interesting than just a cutout of this shape that is just a hole then I will divide the shape for two shapes I can divide it more 
Now my uh, advice at first, if you are not used to it, just color what you need to cut out. I need to cut the, out this, I need to cut out this, I need to cut this and this. Otherwise you just <laughs> make mistakes and cut things that you shouldn't cut. Here I only need to cut here, here and uh, yes, I think <laughs> you see you can just uh, and then cut these shapes and this was again very free shape that I designed and the holes are from the same uh, thing I've just uh, showed you so again these are quite thin dividers and they are as you can see quite flexible so it's really easy to get in with a, this and sometimes when I have a, a shape that is a little bit more uh, difficult to get into I will just do an incision in the center and then get my scissors in and do the shape so that's one way to go about it that's and this works as any kind of bot uh, stencil so these are some of my stencils from plastic dividers moving on <laughs> okay i wanted before we go for the acetate i wanted to have some stencil that is not in this that is larger than A4. A4 is the printer paper. That's the size of the printer paper or copy paper. And I wanted a, a bigger stencil but I didn't have acetate. Acetate here at least is only you can only buy it at A4. So I took one of my boring uh, glossy um, 12 by 12 and, and made this stencil that's another way to go about it it's like a cutting out of the magazine a page same thing it's it's not thick enough it's not thin enough it's in the middle and it's glossy so it's more durable and I've designed this and cut it with again with the scissors but this is a uh, something that will <laughs> You can uh, end up at the loony bin after cutting something like that. Not something that I will recommend doing by, by hand. But if you have the patience, go for it. So that's another option for stencils. Uh, taking boring, glossy uh, 12 by 12. And then we come to the acetate, which is what I'm using most of my uh, stencils. Now, one, it was uh, up to like, I don't know, two years ago, it was kind of difficult to find acetate because it was a very like ancient product because it was used when dinosaurs uh, roamed the earth. We w used it in this kind of projector that was uh, projecting whatever w we wrote on the acetate on a white wall or something like that and then of course there were computers and no one needed uh, acetate and projectors so it took a while until uh, it came back to office uh, supplies and to my cheap store now when it came back it was very thick and it was very hard to cut out of but I've used it now uh, the one I use is 125 micron I think this is the best for uh, hand cutting stencils so here we go how I'm doing my all the latest stencils that you saw me use I, I'm either designing something I want and again it will start with just some printer paper that I will design any kind of whatever <laughs> flower and cut it out or 
I will print some photos from the internet. There are a lot out there, whatever free uh, things that you can uh, print. And I use mostly there is a free a pick.com and there is what's the other one just just that's it <laughs> slipped my mind I will remember it and I will uh, put it I will uh, uh, or yeah yeah Pixbay oh my god I'm the things that just I forget Pixbay is another uh, way to go about it and there are a lot more but I find that I use this too and I print all kinds of stuff the latest were this uh, bird and this magnolia uh, branch with the flowers now I uh, usually uh, play with it uh, with my Photoshop I want it smaller I want it larger so I have two sizes and sometimes I don't play with it I just print it as is so how do I go about it I'm taking this kind of a uh, photo putting that's it on and now I'm using a uh, this kind of markers these are for CDs but you can use any kind of permanent marker uh, I use this because they work great on it on acetate and I have two sides I have a thin one I have a, a, <laughs> a thicker one and it's easier to work with so if I wanted just a silhouette of the bird then I would only go around the shape of the bird like this and cut one big hole in the shape of a bird out of my acetate like so which is one way to go about it sometimes you just want the the whole shape but when you want uh, something more then what you do is start dividing the shape into sections like I showed you before even with the flower you just start dividing and why did I pick this bird because she has a uh, sections of paint and it's easier to just divide the shape now I will take the beak like this and another trick to go with this with designing the stencil you just move it a little bit like so because you need space between your shapes and now I will go and do this and I have like two millimeters between the beak and this shape and I can do the eye which will be just punched with the hole punch and again if I want the body I will move it a little bit it's just easier that this way like so and I have the body once again moving it aside and and of course you can decide for yourself if you want the branch here or not I just wanted the bird and that's how I made my bird a stencil that I've used you've seen me use and just now you can also have an artistic license you can decide that this is just some kind of guideline and you can elaborate on it and do something more expressive for that matter <laughs> okay so here is one and just so if you haven't seen it let's let me show you the bird a stencil I made just so you can see what you can do 
Then I need to find it. Why didn't I take it out beforehand? I forgot. Let's see. It was here. Okay, found it. Found it. Here we go. Here is the bird stencil. If I'm doing a bird, I'll, as I said, I will do several uh, sizes and I'm also will change direction so I will have some, some that facing right, some facing left. It's just easier. I have room on my A4 acetate to do for or whatever you can fit in. So it's better to have all the options. So that's the, the simple way to go about it. And I could decide to go in and do something more elaborate. I can decide to be more wavy and do something very wavy. That's where your design and artistic license come in. I can decide that I want here, if that I want a more elaborate uh, tail, I can go something like that. You can do whatever you want. Sometimes when I cut, I start cutting this thing, I will change as I go if I feel, even if it's just the space between the shapes. If it's not enough, as I cut it, I will change it. So that's the the planning of, of uh, how to do it. The same thing would be with this. Let's take another acetate. Uh, another thing, acetate. If you made a mistake, two ways to go about it. One, just take an eraser and work hard or for removing it if it's just a little mistake use an eraser if you want to clean your whole uh, acetate and start over just take some rubbing alcohol with some uh, cotton ball and wipe it off and let it dry and then start again uh, let the fumes evaporate before a uh, doing anything on the acetate because then it will dissolve you just need it to be dry and then when it's clean and dry you can again use the marker so i can just fix whatever went wrong now if you're not sure and acetate maybe is not something here it's cheap in the cheap store if it's something exp expensive where you are my uh, advice is first uh, to do any of the planning on um, on printer paper and then how you go about it is you take this you take a what it's called a copy paper carbon paper graphite paper tracing paper <laughs> <laughs> graphite <laughs> and you put it in between and you just trace the shapes that you want so first it's on a paper and only then you put the acetate and trace whatever you you decided on so now I've got let's do it moving this aside just so you will see what I'm talking about. So I've got this shape and I need to uh, cut it. The easy, easy way to do about to go about it is to use an exacto knife and in each shape make an incision in the middle, like so. So you will have a place to stick your uh, scissors in. And now I take my scissors and start in the middle and cutting the shape. And I move the acetate with it. And if I need to, 
I will uh, flip it over because sometimes it just doesn't go with the direction you are holding the scissors. You either flip the scissors so the curve will fit the shape you are cutting or you are just flipping the acetate. That's what's good. It's clear. You can see from both sides the design. Now when sometimes you have a really a hard um, angle then just flip it or change direction whatever works for you like if if you know sewing when you have a really hard angle you drop the needle and the foot of the <laughs> machine and you just make make it uh, go your way that's the best explanation I can find and and this is just experience now I'm I cut these things quite quickly so <laughs> but it wasn't that like that at first so it just like this now these tiny shapes of the legs they are difficult I know but and you don't have to you can leave it be and when you are doing your bird you just draw your, the legs instead of making a stencil out of it and but you can also try and use the exacto knife to get in with the scissors up to you so that's the way i go about it now i will use this utility knife or box cutter only when i'm designing something with uh, straight lines and for that I will uh, usually use something a guideline like this like I have on the cutting mat so I can design whatever I want again with spaces always watch that you have spaces and if I want to cut this, what I will do, I will take a, this kind of a ruler, not plastic ones, and I will explain why. This over time with the utility knife will not be straight because it will always peel a little bit of it. And this will never change. So that's how I will go about it and that's how I cut straight shapes which I hardly do I prefer to do things that are a uh, more loose here we go so that's how you do straight uh, edges and well I think basically this is it. That's how I go. And I hope it was helpful. I will put down below the links to the other two uh, videos. And I hope you will make your own stencils. So thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me the comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.